Hi friends, welcome back to another video. Today we are talking about shopping for wishlist dupes in my collection, doing a massive kind of shop my stash mental exercise in which I go through stuff that I wanted from holiday 2020 and then just kind of looking at what I have to replicate that feeling. So if you want to know what dupes I have in my collection for things that I've been craving from holiday makeup collections, keep on watching because we're getting into it right now. Okay, so before we begin, I do want to mention what is the impetus for this video. Kind of unsurprisingly, it is Hannah. Hannah recently created a video basically shopping her makeup collection for wishlist dupes or duping the vibes situations out of the stuff that she wants. And I thought it was a really ingenuitive idea. Not that it is <laughs> undoable uh, for the everyday person, but I do think that thinking specifically about a season or a collection and going at it from a very particular curated angle has been helpful. So typically I wouldn't do it specifically for duping the vibes. I've actually never done a duping the vibes except for the Too Faced Pumpkin Spice. And that was one single product, right? So instead of just duping the vibes for one single product, I am duping the vibes for an entire season of makeup that I wanted to buy that I've been really good about holding off on. So I will have mentioned this in my November Gratefuls video, which is crazy that that is going up. Um, but I mentioned that I'm just like not in a financial place to be splashing out on makeup right now. I feel like I wasn't in focus this entire time and that is horribly upsetting to me. But anyway, I, I think as, as, as many of you guys already know, I have been spending a ton of money on my nail company, not just in upstart costs but also just to attend to it so refilling products specifically packaging application that kind of thing um, those things need to be restocked all the time and so I'm constantly making like hundred dollar purchases on packaging or containers and stuff like that so it is just like a lot to upkeep at all times so I don't have a ton of money just hanging around floating around in either for me to spend on makeup that being said that doesn't mean that there aren't things that I want. So there are a lot of things that have kind of cropped up throughout the season, you know, just being in the makeup sphere, makeup industry that I have wanted, I've kept my eye on, and these are the things that I own that can fit the bill already. So we're going to start off really strong with the thing that I coveted so much before I got it, and that is this Charlotte Tilbury Glow Glowgasm Face Palette. I'm actually wearing this on the face today, and I don't think it looks <laughs> amazing. I mean, it looks okay, but specifically, I really wanted these blush colors. So you can see Peach Gasm and Pink Gasm, as well as I think this is called Spotlight. And this one is, I don't know, some kind of bronzer color. It's a it's a glowy bronzer. This is the first bronzer she came out with, I think, besides the Sculpt and Glow. And it's great. <laughs> it's fine. It's it's what I imagined it to be. But for some reason, I really, really wanted the pink gasm spotlight cream cheek product. Reason being that it's hyped like crazy on the internet. But I do know that I don't like cream products. I mean, I, I like them, but I don't think they're a great bang for buck. I don't think they're that convenient to apply. I think no matter what the product is, if it's a metallic formula, it's going to look kind of chunky on the skin. And I have literally the same shade here. I have it in a palette, which again is something that I much prefer. And it's just been awesome to know that I have literally the same exact thing, but just in literally every way that is better for me, right? It's better that it comes with a bunch of other colors. It's better that it's in a palette and not in a squeeze tube bottle. It's better that the packaging on this is much more luxe than whatever plastic metallic squeezy tube age rewind situation Charlotte has decided to put out for her regular edition cream products. So in literally every capacity imaginable, this one is the better one for me, but <laughs> I've been issuing it for a long time just because I'm dumb. I don't know. I like never thought about it. So this is literally the spot on dupe from the same company if i were to be a little bit more broad in terms of my broad strokes in terms of my duping vibes situation i would actually just pull out my giant physician's formula murmur collection because it has a beautiful assortment of let me just grab it let's talk about this beauty shall we she comes with a beautiful assortment of blushes and highlighters that would all work you know as dupes so here is the section of blushes and highlights. You can see that there's a bunch of colors here that really work for this pink gasm. Mm, I guess I could do like a little swirly situation. So these three combined together would be really pretty. Any of these kind of like rosy blushy colors would be really nice kind of just as a shimmery blush because they all have that very strong, not chrome finish, but it is metallic, right? And it's gorgeous on the skin. It looks very, very youthful, very rosy. Um, if you combine the putty texture of the highlight with the dry crumbly texture of the blush, you do get something that is actually quite luxurious on the skin. And so I have what I need, and it's probably in a more functional container than what it would be if I were to just 
splash out on more stuff. It's been five minutes and we've only covered one thing. All right, let's keep going. I have Charlotte Tilbury bronzer and the one that I've replaced that one with is my Kosas bronzer. So first of all, this was a gift from a friend who I think received it for free. Um, and this is, this is amazing. First of all, I didn't really have my eye on this bronzer, but this is a very, very like sturdy piece of packaging. This reminds me a little bit of the M Cosmetics Faded Clementine or Magic Hour products. I say this having never touched the product, but from what I can tell, the packaging seems identical. Like the component seems like the same exact thing. They've just molded it with a different kind of plastic. So this is a really, really gorgeous translucent matte packaging. Um, so it, it is like visibly matte. And then you've got the Kosas label in gloss finish. It's absolutely gorgeous. Because there's so much depth in the acrylic, the imprint actually leaves like a shadow onto your baked product here. This is not the same tone as the Charlotte Tilbury bronzer. I feel like the Charlotte Tilbury bronzer, especially in the lighter color, would be perfect for my skin tone. This is orange because it's the medium one. It doesn't work for me in that same capacity, but what it fulfills is a desire for a very luxurious bronzer, right? It fulfills that need that I had for a big, beefy, chunky, nice bronzer product, and I don't think I'm gonna use this up. I <laughs> This has to be like a blush on me. It's very, very strong, and as we just mentioned here, I have like literally an anthology of bronzers that I could use, but what I was craving was this really nice, heavy duty, luxurious compact, this compact that felt like it was a little bit something extra, this bronzer that was a little something extra. And first of all, I own a Dior bronzer, so the fact that I wanted an even more like luxe bronzer is absurd to me. I'm sorry that I felt that way. And two, bronzer doesn't need to be luxe, right? It's literally just there to shade your face. And I already own a lot of nice things. It's not like the only makeup I've ever owned in my life was Wet n Wild, and I wanted to treat myself to one nice thing. This is coming from someone who wanted to replace one nice thing with another nice thing and it just felt very um, very tone deaf and silly for me to even want that. But it is something that I wanted so I'm anti-hauling it and I have something that works for me and it was free. Next thing that I wanted were the gold palette from Huda, so that new celebration one from Cult Beauty, and the leather shop eyeshadow palette from Etude House. So the gold palette, it came out and I wanted it. Like there was a feeling in my heart that was just like, ooh, shiny, pretty colors, marble, packaging, everything is right for me. And it is like right for me in all those ways. But be that as it may, I have resisted all of those tiny little Huda palettes for this long. There are plenty of those palettes that are right for me. Any of the light versions of any palette that she's created has been right for me. So like the light nude or the light um, dusky khaki series one or the pastel one that was pink or purple, right? There are any multitude of mini palettes that Huda has come out with that are perfect for me and I've been able to talk myself at it every single one of them. The one that I really, really have been struggling with is that leather shop product from Etude House. It is simply stunning. Like it has the most beautiful payoff. I actually may buy that because it's $20 and I think it would be a good addition to my collection. But in the meantime, I have my Natasha Denona gold palette to shop my stash for it for two different reasons actually. So the really sparkly metallic gold colors, I think I could, you know, easily do put these sparkly colors up here. This is kind of a no brainer, but what I'm really thinking of are those rich cognac tones in that leather palette. And I feel like I could, replicate them maybe not exactly but pretty steadily with these matte colors I think there's something really nice about the colors in the leather palette because they're very rich in orange shade this is not necessarily very rich in orange shade but it gives that same kind of leathery cognac -y feel when I look at this it evokes some of those same warm leather feelings and you know it's been it's been funny I feel like neutrals have had an insane revival this year it was like there's this dichotomy of like really, really bright colors and then really, really wearable, rich neutrals. And I've been really digging the neutrals. Yeah, I think the longer I sit on it, the more I really want the Etude House palette. But for now, I will be using the mattes in this. Hi friends, editing me here. I am playing back this video literally the day after or the day that I am filming my Etude House unboxing, initial swatching, some comparison video, and I totally forgot the doy to do the comparison with the Natasha Denona Gold palette because it does have some of those matte shades, like I mentioned. I do think that the texture is really similar. However, the undertones are completely different. The Leather Shop palette is very much so more in the orangey, ruddy, almost like yellow mustard, not brown mustard. Very, very bright, saturated, warm colors. And the Natasha Denona Gold palette is very tertiary, very grungy, definitely leans more on a cool kind of greenish side. So if you think of like a greenish gold or a greenish chartreuse mustardy color so they're very very different so I don't know if that's me enabling myself but 
yeah, I, I just don't think they're dupes of each other. Next thing that I wanted was a Dior highlighter, specifically the one from Christian Dior, so not the Dior backstage line, but the original like boutique Christian Dior makeup line. It's more matronly for sure. It's more mature. It's a more luxury brand. Um, I don't think it's trying to appeal to a younger audience, but they created this really, really stunning highlighter. It has this beautiful snowflake embossing, knowing me that embossing can be gone ASAP. But the reason why I wanted it is because it looked like a really icy highlight. And I don't know if it actually is an icy highlight. I just know in my head it is an icy snowflake. It's in this beautiful winter packaging. Everything about it seems like a beautiful icy champagne color. And then on the skin, I want it to be like my e.l.f. Solar Flare highlight or this. I have shot my stash for my Benefit Cheek Star reunion tour. I love this palette. First of all, it was a gift from my hubby, so I love that. But also the shade Cookie is what I want that highlight to be like. You can see it in the video, how freaking reflective this thing is. And I don't think Christian Dior is putting out a highlight that is this reflective, but I want it to be this reflective. In my mind, a snowflake highlight that looks like this is going to look like this in real life. And of course, there's no way of knowing. We're not shopping in person. So this is this is all I have to go on. This is my desire. The desire has manifested itself into my collection and I already own it. So that's great. I don't have to go out and buy a thing. I think all in all, this whole palette probably costs the same price as that one limited edition highlight. And guess what? It would flounder with all of my other single highlights. It's not that I don't use them. It's just that how many highlights can one person wear on her face, right? A limited amount. Next thing I wanted were the by Rito. Wow, this is going to be really stupid. So these two are hand in hand. So the first one I wanted is the by Rito Corporate Colors Eyeshadow Quint. And it's because it's gorgeous. I mean, it looks like an oyster. It's beautiful. Michelle Wong had it. I just want it. I want it, but it's $70. I have to pre-order it. I'm not going to get it. There's like no world in which I would be paying for a Quint. You know why? Because I purchased the stupid Tom Ford one and it was $90. And I regret it. <laughs> I don't want it anymore. Um, not that I don't want it, but it's not worth $100. Like, this was $100, this thing right here, this little quad right here. It's fine. It's, like, it's serviceable. It, it's not bad. I just don't know why this would cost. I don't know what compelled me to pay so much money for this. Um, so I know that the Byrino one is not happening. I'm not going to bring that into my life. It's not going to, it's not going to be here. It's not going to be my life. Um, and the other thing that it reminds me of is the Charlotte Tilbury Stoned Rose face in a palette. Ooh, Charlotte Tilbury in general, she just, there is some kind of hypnotic pull that she has on me. Charlotte Tilbury is my Achilles heel. And not because I buy from them frequently, but because there's something about their branding, something about their corporate ethos that really just captures a basic bitch like me. Like I just love those rosy blushy tones that Charlotte comes out with. And she came out with I mean, what does she always come out with? It's like a quad plus a blush and a highlight. I mean, no, I don't even need to do this. It's just this, right? This is the product she's putting out every year. It is a basic B neutral eye quad, right? Something that's like swish, pop, contour, color. And then you've got some regular freaking highlight, blush, bronzer. It's literally just this trio right here. And for some reason, she feels justified in charging like $80 for that product. Granted... Did I buy one last year? Yes. Did I return it immediately? Yes. It just, I, I regretted it and I just didn't use it and I gave it back because it's, it's not going to be worth $75. It's just not right. Like it's just whatever you think it's going to do for you. It's not going to do that thing. It's going to do the regular thing, which is be an eyeshadow, a blush, a highlight and a bronzer. It's not going to make you rich. It's not going to make you look rich. It's not going to make you a skinnier, taller, more successful person. It's not going to heal you of your past trauma. It's literally just a palette. And for some reason, I feel like Charlotte Tilbury's brand is going to heal me of these woes, not like consciously. That's like not how I feel, but I always feel like there's going to be some kind of magical quality to the product that once I obtain it, it's just regular. And it's fine. It's beautiful. It performs well, but it is just like every other thing. Like this Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk blush. Love it. At one point I was convinced, convinced, convinced I was going to collect all of them. And I owned the one. I was like, Hey girl, this thing is $45. Why don't we stop at one and see how you feel? I got it. And then I got the Physicians Formula like Beachy Peach Blush and it's literally it's the same thing. They're the same thing, same formula. And I don't know why I thought it would be different. So this year I'm outsmarting myself and my biases and we are just going to use these guys instead and it'll be great and it'll be fine and I will not miss the Stoned Rose palette at all.
Next thing I wanted was the Fenty Beauty Diamond Balm, the pink one. So this is another weird thing because I don't like Fenty. Like, I, I it's a thing that I've said before on my channel and I didn't get crucified for it, which is surprising. Um, but Fenty is like not my aesthetic. I I just don't like it. I think it, it, it tries to be something that it's not or people have made it out to be something that it's not and it's just not what I like. It doesn't float my boat. Um, but when they came out with their pink, is it their fussy set? Um, or maybe it's it's Fenty Glow. It's just this like really beautiful juicy rose gold situation and I Love anything rose gold like rose gold is literally my favorite color So I really want it. I want the cream cheek. I want the highlight I want the gloss bomb the whole situation the whole nine yards gloss bomb was really easy for me to write off because I don't really like lip gloss and part of that set is a full-size lip gloss I don't like lip gloss. So, you know that part was kind of null to me the thing that I really wanted was that diamond bomb because um, the clear one, Have Any Carrots, has been on my wish list for God knows how long. And then I got it in the liquid form. Not only was it insanely expensive, it's made of glass and it shattered and I broke it and the whole thing was just thrown out and it broke my heart. But on the face, it was absolutely gorgeous. It's literally just a streak of diamond dust. It's gorgeous. And to have it in pink would be like, what other product exists in the world for me, right? Besides that product. Um, but I know it wouldn't be a good thing to buy because it's probably going to be $40. It's not going to be worth it. And so again, I am shopping my stash for these two items. Hopefully they will serve the right purposes, but you've got the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk, which really just looks like a highlight. It doesn't really come off as a blush. It's so light. You're going to tell me that this is a blush? I mean, I actually, this is on top of a lipstick. So let's take a look on this finger here, this one. That's a blush i mean it, it doesn't really look like a blush it, it honestly just looks like a, a blush topper and so i'm imagining this will suffice as well as again this pink pink gasm and peach gasm situation i don't know what fenty glow actually looks like but i'm imagining it's some kind of sparkly pink situation granted neither of these has that like very very ritzy sparkly actual chunks of shine um quality that the actual fenty beauty one has but i don't think that minutia is what is making me want that product. What's making me want that product is the fact that it's sparkly and pink and cute, and I have sparkly pink and cute. It's right here, so I don't need her products. Thank you very much. The next thing that I want are the M Cosmetics Serum Blushes. So again, I've been wanting them forever, and when she dropped her second release with Little Lilac, the red color, the peach color, and I think there might be one called Amethyst Glow or something like that. There's one that is like a dusky amethyst color. And when I saw that, I was like, great, I'm just going to buy all eight. That'll be it. I'm just going to buy all eight at the same time. And I nearly, nearly almost pressed check out like several times in a row. This is not a holiday release. It's just that M Cosmetics is a brand that I think I've waited. I've waited until this time because I've always said, you know what, just wait until Black Friday. I'm sure they'll have a sale. I'm sure they'll have like a vault or a set or a collection or something and you can get it on like an actual sale. I've said this to myself multiple, multiple times. Not only that, but they've also had a two for 40 sale like multiple times and I've just, I've never bit the bullet. I've never bitten the bullet. I've never actually gone through with it. And you know, lo and behold, I found out that the Physicians Formula Organic Wear um, Dewy Blush Elixir, I have this one. It's the peachy one and I own it. I actually don't own it. I, I got it for free because I had stacked some extra bucks together and so I purchased it and I hate this thing. It's chunky. So I don't know if I just have a weird one, but let me just get up close to you guys. Can you see that there's like chunks in here? It's like got what feels like whiteheads floating in here. I don't know if these are like beads of vitamin E, but it's so unappetizing. It looks literally like um, my pores when they're clogged. It's terrible. I have to check. Yeah, it just says that there's super fruit, aloe vera, jojoba oil, cactus oil, um, and the first ingredient is sunflower seed oil. So this honestly feels like it should be really nourishing. And I watched Hannah's video and she said that it's nourishing, but I just cannot, like the tripophobia in me cannot get over the fact that there's just like chunks of product in here. Um, and I heard that this is a formula and look dupe for one of the really popular serum blushes. So with that being said, I don't think I'll like them. I'm glad I didn't spend 200 on those things. I will keep this in, you know, my little holiday rotation here to remind myself that I almost spent $200 on a product that I most likely would never use. I think there's this allure in my head of cream products, specifically cream products that are designed by these really, really bougie, chic, millennial uh, luxury companies like Michelle's company, like Glossier, because I want to be that person. I want to be the person who wears cream cheeks. But I'm lazy, and you know what's really convenient? Powders. Powders are easy. So 
With all that being said, um, I will keep this on standby. I don't think I will like it. Not because it's cheap, not because it's drugstore, not because of color, but because it has these weird chunks and it's a cream formula and I just don't think that that vibes with me. But we will see. I'll use them and we'll see what comes of it. Next thing that I wanted was the Guerlain Meteorites. You guys would have known that I've wanted these meteorites for so long and then lo and behold, their holiday collection is kind of ugly. It's like gold. It's like one color. It looks like you just took the regular gun law meteorites and you spray painted them gold. And I don't like them. I think it's kind of ugly. So um, that product combined with the Hourglass Sculpture Palette is the Milani Prep Set and Glow Powder. My trusty $7.99 powder from Milani. This is an illuminating setting powder and I like it. It's really quite fine on the skin, like you can't tell at all that there's powder on your skin, it's undetectable, and yet it does definitely dull down some of that excess shine and that dewiness, and it looks really skin-like. So, granted, this is not a cute thing. I would love to replace it with a more luxurious version of itself, like a cute, sophisticated older sister, but for now, I'm pleased with her. She does a good job. I like literally have no complaints about this thing besides the fact that it's dinky, but I, I don't know what I expected. I paid like literally less than $8 for this thing. So I think it's fine that it looks and acts like this. I think in fact the quality inside is quite impressive. So all of the fancy, fancy schmancy finishing, setting, illuminating powders that I wanted for Christmas this year, we're not buying any of them because one, I don't like powder and two, I have this one and it does a good job. So Milani, you are the real one and I love you. I'm never gonna stop loving you. And she replaces all of those desires that I have for fancy setting powder that I believe is going to make me set my face. Next, we have the Brown Blur Lip Product from Etude House. So it's not really called Brown Blur Lip Product. It's called like Brown Leather something something or other. And if I buy that eyeshadow product, I may throw in the lip product. But basically, it is a blurry matte lip color. Is that up my alley? Absolutely. Is it something that I need? No, it's not. I have raw chocolate. I have this, um, what is this called? Coco Connoisseur. I have Rome. These are all blurry lip products. They're matte. They're good. And the whole shtick with that Etude House product is that it's high impact. It's like very, very pigmented. It's very blurring. It's very matte. And I'm like, great, that sounds like something that I love. And guess what? It is. I have tons of them. So I literally just selected two that I felt like duped the vibes. So there's this raisiny brown and there's this orangey brown and then there's this purpley brown that I'm wearing on my lips today. And guess what? They all look the same on the mouth. I also have a more colory dupe. I think Velvet Teddy may be more like a cocoa-y, neutrally brown. But with that being said, they're all just like brown lipsticks, right? They, they don't functionally differ in any way, shape, or form. No one, and this is the thing that kind of puts me into perspective, it's like no one's going to look at your lips and be like, oh, are you wearing a different brown blur lipstick than you are yesterday? Because, you know, no one cares. And I don't want this to become the, the frame that I use to kind of assess things is how like other people see me but at the same time right like you have to realize there's a point at which your return on investment has decreased right when you get a new manicure or you get a like striking new outfit it's kind of fun because it's different right it looks visually different from what you own when you buy your 60th brown matte lip color the excitement diminishes a little because you already own 59 other brown lip colors i don't own 50 brown lip colors i do own probably six uh, of these like ultra pigmented brownie nude lip colors that I don't need another one. Um, and I think there's this allure of trying a new product, trying something that you haven't tried before. But I'm going to push back on that a little bit. I'm going to wait. It's fine. $12. I don't need to spend it. And you know, part of what's so insidious is $12 doesn't feel like you're breaking the bank to try something new. It's like, ooh, for $12 I could try something new and it might be and it might be my new favorite thing, but for $12, it might also be a piece of trash that you wear once or twice and you never wanna wear again. So I am very, very wary of throwing in a thing here and there. We'll see what my ultimate decision comes to because I know I want that eyeshadow palette, but I do know that I have colors that can match that eyeshadow palette without having to go shop for something. So that's a good sign. So that's a sign that the eyeshadow palette will probably integrate into my wardrobe quite well, but it's also a sign that I may make an impulse purchase here or there to supplement it and I don't wanna be there. So these are the products I'm using to combat that urge. Two things that I have next are BB creams. I had this like weird state of time where I really wanted to buy a bunch of BB creams. Like I don't even know which 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 cushion foundation I want in general, but you know, between the original pumping one that comes in a giant pink tube to the one that looks like a mushroom to the one that is, you know, holographic and pretty and refillable. And then Michelle Fawn released her daydream cushion. I was like, oh, cushions, they're the best. I'm gonna get a cushion. And guess what? I have basically BB creams. And guess what I don't like? BB creams. You know why? Because they are light coverage. I don't like light coverage things. 
I think at best I will do a medium coverage. At most, I love me a full coverage foundation. Um, but yeah, these like light coverage products flounder in my collection because I don't like them. They're fine. They're good. They're acceptable for every day. Like I'm wearing a really light coverage product today and guess what? You can see literally all of my spots and I don't like it. It's just not my most comfortable self. I feel like I do myself up in some, like I do my brows, I do my eyes, I do my highlight. Like I literally do every part of my face and then to have my skin peeking through just feels very weird to me. So I don't know why I wanted BB creams. I have them. I've shopped my stash for them recently and I haven't touched them. So that tells me that this is not the right product for me to get. In fact, I really want to declutter these, but I'm not going to because I want to use them up. But yeah, sometimes there is a desire that boils up inside of you, that wells up inside of you. It, it kind of is urging to burst through and then you kind of prod at it with like the, the tiniest little stick of skepticism and then you realize the whole thing is based on this like weird emotional drive to get something that doesn't really make sense. For me to invest in cushion foundations. I think I was like, oh, like the application with the sponge. You know, I, I like a sponge. I like the fact that I can press it in. Like, girl, buy yourself a sponge then, right? Like, I didn't do enough prodding before I went down the rabbit hole and started surfing and surfing and surfing for pictures of cushions. <laughs> so that is on me. Um, but I know that this for sure is something that I'm not going to be buying. And then the last thing I bought, <laughs> which is the Kimchi Shake Beauty Compacts. So those really, really adorable heart compacts. She is having a 50% off sale on her site. So I was like, yeah, if, if it's going to be 50% off, I'm going to get a bunch of products. So I did. Um, and there will be a line review coming up very soon because it's two day shipping. So that'll be very fun. Um, I didn't buy like one thing from each category because Kimchi like came out with a ton of different products. There's foundation and concealer and primer and eyeshadow palettes and eyeliners and like a whole line of makeup. I'm not interested in anything besides those compacts. So I bought a ton of different compacts. We've got bronzer, we've got blush, we've got highlight and like finishing powder. So we're going to play with all those powder compacts and then we will see how they are. So I think I bought six or seven products for $50. So I'm very, very pleased about that. And with that being said, guys, we have sufficiently shot my stash for dupes of stuff that I would have otherwise purchased with my holiday makeup budget. And I didn't. So I saved, I don't know how much money. I might tally it all up and put it at the bottom of the screen here. Editing me, please put the total here at the bottom. Okay, so with that being said, guys, let me know what items you are not buying for this holiday season, and hopefully I can inspire you to literally take apart what items you want and assess them for what they are, which is cosmetic products and not objects that will enhance your life in any way, shape, or form. I mean, maybe if it's, it's a really good purchase, but you do want to do the mental exercise, the gymnastics of figuring out what part of that will increase your quality of life. And if you do figure out something that you're not going to get, something that you can dupe out of your collection, please let me know. I would be so interested to hear what products and how much money you are saving. That'll be a fun exercise. And I know this is coming off the heels of someone else's video, but I also hope that by kind of writing on her coattails, we can promote this message that holiday spending doesn't have to be insane and holiday releases don't have to be something that you fall for. So that being said, guys, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. I upload all the time and December is abundant with uploads and check out my Etsy store. Don't forget to leave a comment down below. I love you and I will see you very, very soon. Bye.